Good morning and welcome back to Indiana Insiders in this Sunday morning. So much going on. The race for president, Senate, governor, Congress. Signs are sprouting up everywhere. Indiana's political season is indeed in full bloom. Now this sign sprouted up and has captured its fair share of attention. I need to give credit where credit's due. My daughter spotted this on a Radio Now website, a yard sign for President of the United States. It simply reads, Everybody Sucks 2016. Then in very small print it goes on to say the United States is doomed. To help me decide whether the country is actually doomed, I have Democrat Robin Winston, Republican Mark Shublack. We have Dr. Laura in the house. Dr. Laura Albright, we finally have a doctor in here, political <laughs> science professor from the University of Indianapolis. Good morning to all of you. It's great to have you all here. So. Is America doomed, Dr. Laura? I want to start with you. Well, I certainly hope not, and I don't think we are, but I, I do think there is a sentiment when you look at all the candidates, there's a lot of negative advertising, and people are getting the feeling they're not necessarily voting for a candidate so much as voting against ones that they don't like. Mark? This is America. This is exercising free speech. This is what we do. This is why we have elections. Um, I think the ship of state is just fine. We're going to make it through this crisis and uh, keep going. Robin? Did that have a Trump disclaimer at the bottom of it? <laughs> um, no, this country is far from doom. We're, in, we're doing very, very well. On the Democratic side, I should point out that Hoosiers are starting to feel the burn. Bernie Sanders set up shop in Broad Ripple and a second office in Bloomington. At camp, will soon have offices in Fort Wayne, Lafayette, and South Bend. It is the first presidential campaign to put down temporary roots in Indiana. The Sanders camp has a tough hill to climb, but they are convinced their message will resonate in Indiana. Indiana has been very badly hit by a lot of these really reckless trade deals uh, and we're seeing it just recently in the news with Carrier and U UTEC. Uh, you know, Indiana is about to lose thousands of really good paying jobs because of bad trade deals. Now, not to be outdone, the Hillary Clinton camp named a state director last week as well. Peter Hamscom will assume those responsibilities. He says the Clinton camp will not be outdone or outworked here in Indiana. We look forward to opening uh, offices around the state, hiring staff, and putting together a truly statewide effort to have uh, every conversation that we possibly can uh, with every voter uh, who will be participating in the Democratic primary. So I'm really wondering, Robin, as we watch all this, has the terra firma shifted from underneath Hillary Clinton? 2008, she did so well here, but it's a different ball game in 2006. It's a different ball game, and Bernie Sanders has helped increase turnout and interest among younger voters. Look, this is all about the long haul, Kevin. Our party's concentrating on who's going to be president, who's going to lead this nation in a progressive fashion to the future. We're not worried about stopping the nominee before they get to the convention. But so, is Hillary going to carry Indiana? Or I don't Bernie know that. I have no idea. You know, Wendell Ford, my mentor in politics, Kentucky senator, once said, some of my friends are for it, some of my friends are against it. I'm with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what do you make of this? Hey, we ha are going to have a spirited debate on our side. Uh, we have three candidates. I'm looking forward to them coming to town and meeting them all. And uh, we'll talk again, I'm sure, about what happens in November after our convention. I think the way I have it written here, Mark, I say the Democrat side is interesting. The Republican side is downright entertaining. <laughs> what do we make of all that? Trump, Cruz with a coloring book, and Trump can't keep out of the news every day. Well, um, look, I think uh, th there may be two schools of thought. Uh, on Donald Trump, one, uh, does he have the judgment? Does he have policy understanding? Does he have the temperament? The other school of thought, uh, folks maybe not too concerned about that, and they like what he says. They uh, overlook some of the things he has to say, but is he going to get to that magic number uh, for the convention so we have an uncontested or contested convention? I think it's very likely. We have a contested convention. Don't count out Cruz. Don't count out Kasich. Uh, this is going to be decided later. But uh, uh, can can Trump get to a, a point where he can lock those delegates down in Wisconsin and in Indiana? 1237. And I if believe. he doesn't get to that, it could be anybody's show, Robin. Sure, it could be. It could open up the convention. I believe they did that initially in 76 at the convention in Kansas City between Reagan and Ford. Um, it, right. could, it could open up. Uh, right now, it, it, everything I hear is anything but Trump. So I guess. But that's how is he going to play in Indiana, Dr. Laura? How is Trump going to play? Here? Well, I think it'll be really interesting to see, um, given the fact that Trump does do very well with the voters. Maybe they're single issue voters, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of people that we've seen haven't necessarily come out before to vote and really find his message appealing. You know, he's obviously been successful. 
In terms of how well he does here, I think we'll have to wait and see, but I think he'll do fairly well in the state of Indiana. That outsider thing seems to be resonating, Mark. It does. For Trump. It does. Um, but again, uh, don't count out Governor Kasich. He has a good record in Ohio. There's something to be said for that. He's a Midwesterner. And Cruz, I understand, is leading in Wisconsin. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. A lot of coloring the story books has to in be Wisconsin. Told. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the name I'm hearing interesting about if it goes to a contested convention, if it happens to go. And Robin, I'm interested in this because now they're saying after two or three ballots. In the old days, they'd have to go 50, 60, 150 oh, yeah. ballots yeah. before yeah. they shifted. Yeah. Now it's like one, two, yeah, you're, you're gone. You're right. Yeah, because Lincoln, if you talk about what happened in Illinois, actually it was in Illinois where he got nominated. I mean, they went three or four ballots deep. They went 10 ballots deep in other conventions. I mean, so one or two is not an aberration. And we should say FDR the first time around came out of a contested convention. Yeah. And I also want to point out, uh, oh, where was I going with that second point on that? But anyway, what I'm trying to figure out is, oh, Condoleezza Rice. I've heard a name floated yeah. as Condoleezza Rice. How interesting is that? I, I think it's very interesting. I don't know how likely it is, but certainly in the fact that, you know, you do see a lot of people looking for alternatives. And one of the things we've said, maybe the anti-Trump versus everyone, you know, people for Trump and people against Trump, I think it'd be fascinating. And, you know, I, I'm th just as interested on the Democrat side, Robin, because I'm not so sure things are sewn up here. Well, it's not necessarily sewn up. I mean, they still have to get their ballots. But here's what's amazing to me about the Republican side. Millions of people have voted for Trump. Millions of Republicans have voted for Trump. And yeah. yet, that's not good enough for the hierarchy of their party. I love it. Let's get ready for, for winning it's November. It's no different than the Democrat side. You've got to get an X amount of, dem of delegates, That's right? correct. But at least our people are not trying to stop the nominee. The hierarchy's not trying to stop the nominee. Bernie's oh. trying to stop him. <laughs> well, we'll well, I want to go back to Dr. Albright here because I want to share some, first I want to share some comments from one of her classes at U of I. I asked some of her students what the most memorable moments of the presidential campaign have been so far for millennials. We're going to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. <laughs> or when Trump just did it this past week, he pulls out the water bottle and he's like, it's Rubio, and he starts throwing the water around. And I'm like, oh, gee, what, what is happening now? Uh, the young women of the world are looking at things and saying, where are the boys? The boys are with Bernie. Yes. The banning all Muslims from coming to America. Dr. Albright, you work with these kids all the time, <laughs> young people, I should say. I what are you hearing from them about this election? Well, they're fascinated. I think a lot of them are really excited because it is such a, an important election, and they really feel that. They get that. For many of them, it's the first time that they're voting. Um, but I do think there's also that fear. It, it seems to be really negative, and in their perspective, you know, they hear so many negative things that are, are portrayed by the candidates, by their campaigns, and the media. I think they're excited, but they do exhibit that kind of concern as well. Young people are so important in politics, Mark. We've seen it over the years. We are. We're uh, pushing on the election deadline, re uh, voter registration deadline. Mm -hmm. So we hope uh, for both sides there are a lot of new voters on both sides of the. Island. What are you hearing from young people? Well, first off, we got started as young people in this. I mean, we did? you know, yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't just like morph into this all of a sudden. Um, it's great to see this much enthusiasm. What I liked about all those students were they were tuned in. Yeah. Nobody was like, oh, when's the election? You know, what, you know, here's my iPhone. They were tuned in to what's going on. Yeah, that is great. As we close out this first segment of Indiana Insiders, I just wanted to share with you something that cropped up on the web over April Fool's Day last Friday that seems to put all of this in perspective this election year as Americans shop for the very first time for election insurance. Watch this. The modern world is constantly evolving which is why you need an insurance company that evolves with you. Whether you're setting down roots to start a family, is the next president of the United States, or uprooting your family to move to Canada. Because now more than ever, it's important to have a smart policy that protects your home in the event that you decide to abandon it for the next four years. Introducing election insurance from eSurance. This is the Okay. Election so night. Election insurance. Country. What do you think? I love it. I love that. I, I hope it gets headquartered here in Indiana. <laughs> We're going to move to Canada. For those of you who decide you don't want to move to Canada, stay with us. We're going to be back for the next segment. We'll look at races for Senate, Governor, even a congressional race of note that involves the state of Tennessee, of all things, when we come back.